Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do what I said I wouldn't do, which is showing you how I made the curtains. Now for a better tutorial and better filming, please look at Bentley House Minis. She makes fantastic tutorials, um, but I am using the principles that she used and it works, it really works. The problem with miniature curtains is that they don't hang like real curtains would. If you put curtains in a dollhouse, they're going to stick out. They're not going to look right. They're not going to look like, they, they look like they're defying gravity. So this, what I'm doing here, this tutorial will show you actually how to make the curtains look realistic and to make them look like they really are hanging down straight. Looks a business. So here I am, I am making a frame for the curtains to go on. Here I'm using uh, some foam cardstock and I've had to put on front, uh, left and right because I know what I'm like and I forget. So here, these are the basic structures for the curtains to sit on. They're, this will sit above the window frame with the curtains on it. I'm cutting them out to size with my trusty little Stanley knife which has saved me a fortune in um, little blades for my detail cutter and save for the other one, cut it out Probably hear the traffic in the background. I do have the window open, so excuse that. Okay, so that's that done. Here's the material I'm going to use. It's so nice. It's got a stretch to it. It's like a velvety material. I got a load of scraps online. I think it cost me a couple of quid for a box full of scraps. Brilliant stuff. So this is going to be really nice for the uh, bedroom curtains. A bit of luxury. So here I am measuring out what I need. Make sure you stretch the material out first, especially if it's really stretchy. There we go, I've got the size that I need and the four pieces that I need, two curtains for each side and I'm cutting them out. Now what I've noticed with this material is that it naturally folds on itself so I'm not going to hem the sides of the curtains. I will hem the bottom but not the sides. Now this is the foam that I'm going to use to pin the curtains into place. What you need to do, which I'll show you in a minute, you put the curtains on, you glue them on. So I'm using pins to stick the whole thing in. So there's a pin to keep the foam onto the foam. So pin that in place there. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to glue the top part, the, the, I'm going to call it the black bit. I'm going to glue the black bit because that's where my curtains are going to rest on. The tops of the curtains are going to rest. Here's me trying to get the last of the glue out. Right, so glue the curtain onto the black card and then I'm pinning it into place. Now those pins stay in until the glue sets, which gives you the shape of the curtain. So here we go, getting the glue in, and now I'm going to glue in the natural folds, like the creases that you would get in the curtains. If you pull the curtains too, if you've got curtains at home, you pull them back, they crease up. But what you need to do is glue in those creases or else you will lose them. You will lose them when you hang them up in your doll's house, unless the material's really heavy. So 
here I am, I'm gluing the creases into place. But not only do you need to do the creases at the top, you need to do the creases going down the curtain. So here I am, gluing it. And pinning it into place. And that, like, as I say, those pins will stay until it dries. Here I decide to do a few more. I do realise at some point, ha, I have not glued the bottom of the curtain. So I kind of do it at the wrong bit, but it, it still worked. So glue, glue, glue. And pin in place. Once this is dried, it's going to take, I leave it a couple of days just to make sure it is dry. Here I, I realise, ah, I've not done the bottom. Glue the bottom on. Make a little seam because I didn't notice that the, the ends were showing on the bottom. The sides rolled in on themselves, but the bottom didn't. So here we go, more glue, more pins. Keep it into place. And you can make any shape you want. You can make the curtains do whatever you like just by pinning them all into place. And it works a treat, it really does. Like I said, I leave them a couple of days on the foam to dry out fully because if that glue isn't dry, you're gonna lose the shape as soon as you take the pins out. So leave it a good couple of days. Let the uh, glue do its job. And I'm making sure the glue sticks because it can take a bit to get through the material. And here we go again. Glue it on. I must apologize for the filming. I'm absolutely rubbish at this, but I do the best I can. I've only got a smartphone. I don't have um, your fancy computer and camera anymore. My, my computer died last year, actually. And I can't really justify buying a new one because my kids are all grown up now. I've only got one at home. They've all got their smartphones, what have you. When they were younger, you know, we used to have top of the range computers so they could do their homework and what have you. We don't really need one now. So I thought, well, I don't want to go to that expense unless I really, really need to. So, you know, it's pointless me buying one at the moment. So, so I do, sorry for the lighting. The lighting is really reflecting off that foam there. But I've realized that my little homemade uh, foam prop for my filming will have to be moved because the view is not great but here we go so pinning in more folds and there we go pinning that in another little fold there pin that in it's quite fun to do actually i mean you do get your hands full of glue but it is quite fun to do Knowing that it is going to stay in that position when they're dry, it's brilliant, it really is. So I'm starting on the second set of curtains. I only show one half because my film is so bad that I missed the other curtain. Little half of it, you could only see little edges, so got rid of that. So pin that in again. More folds. Pin it in. This tacky glue is great, I mean, it does do the job. It really does. Great stuff. And another fold going in. I do forget to keep the, uh, I get that carried away when I'm making something. I forget, ah, you need to keep this in frame so people can see what you're doing. But my memory is absolutely shocking due to my, uh, health condition it's a bit rubbish so you'll have to bear with me on that you will get used to that if you are a, a loyal follower so there we go another one pin it in 
shortly. There we go. There it is. Making sure I've not glued one curtain to the other. There we go. Another pen. Want a bit of a different shape on that. I don't want to make them exactly the same because in real life your curtains will not look exactly the same when you open them and close them. They all, you know, look different. Put my glue and more pin in. And the same for the other one, but as I say, I uh, did such a bad job of keeping it in frame that you can't see it, so it's pointless showing it. But I'll show you a little bit before it gives up. Before I think, no, absolutely awful, you cannot see it. Right, so the next thing I'm going to make is a pelmet for each of the curtains. So I'm using some good old Amazon boxes. The card is brilliant on them. And I'm, I've measured out the size that I need for the pelmets. Here I am drawing it out. It also realise that my measuring skills are also perfect. Not It out. Oh, that's a steady hand for me. Usually all over the place, so I was having a good day. Okay. There we go. So that's the pelmet, the whole pet. Now I was, because of the room between the two windows, it was only a small space. So I thought I'll make one big pelmet. But I measured it wrong. So I must have, in one part of my brain, I thought, right, I'll make one pelmet. And the other part of my brain probably thought, no, we'll make two. Mismeasured it. I told you my measuring skills were absolutely brilliant. So anyway, I'll show you what I do. <laughs> I made this big one and then I end up cutting it in half. And luckily, it, it works. So here we are. I'm covering the pelmet with some of that material. The same material, the velveteen material. So, cutting out the size that I need for the helmet. Important not to put too much of an edge. You want it to kind of fit fit. You don't want loads of overhang because you have got to glue this on top of the curtains. So, I mean, I think Bentley Houseman is. Uh, apart from doing a better job, they do it different. Uh, I think she, I think she makes some kind of frame to go over it or whatever, a frame that goes over the curtains. But what I'm doing is I'm gluing this directly onto the curtains. Looks just as good. You can't tell. It's a lot easier for me anyway. It's a lot easier. So here we go. Cover the cardboard. It's going to look really good when it's done. Get the tacky glue on. Stick the edges on. I'm determined to use the whole of this bottle. Get my money's worth. But it's constantly, the nib constantly gets blocked. So I'm having to unblock it quite a few times. But it does the job. Right, here we go. Back on. Get the edges glued on. What you can't see off camera there, because my expert filming, is I cut the corners off so it folds a bit more neatly onto itself. I'll show you in a minute, you'll probably see it on the next bit that I do. So just keeping the glue down a bit. So it's a second or two to soak through. What I tried really hard to do on the front of the curtains was to make sure that the glue didn't show through the material. So you 
you need to use exactly what you need rather than too much. If it goes through your curtains, you've wrecked it. Luckily, I got away with that really. I kind of used what I needed, but this kind of material, this velvety material, will show every glue mark. So it's really important to make sure that you know your glue doesn't go through to the front of the curtain if you can help it. So the folds that I did, here we go, cutting off the little corners. Um, no, it's still just oh there, there you go. Um, yeah, just make sure that, you know, when you're doing the folds, that the fold will cover the glue that you've put on and the, the body of the, the fold will cover anything like that. On other materials, you can get away with it on thinner materials because you don't seem to notice the glue coming through, depending on, you know, the pattern you use and the type of material it is. If you were using satin or you know, something shiny, you would definitely notice a glue. So be careful on that one. Maybe practice on some cheaper material or do a practice with a little square of the material you want to use. Put a bit of glue on and see how it reacts. If, it, if you can get away with it, brilliant. But if it's showing through, you're gonna have to adapt how you do your curtains. So here we go, cutting the corners off again. Just makes a neater fold and you've not got the gather on the back. And you don't want it showing through on the front. You want, on the front, you want it to have a neat, neat corner. Now, in between this and the photos that I show you at the end, I do realise, ah, yes, it's not big enough for one whole helmet. So that's where I cut it down the middle. Luckily, as I said, uh, I got away with it. You couldn't tell. Or else I'd have had to redo the whole thing, but yeah, yeah, I got away with it, luckily. The edge looks all right when I cut it as well, so, which is good. It's a little bit more glue to you know, up, and it's fine. Holding it down. There we go. So that's the completed helmet. And that's how it's going to look. <laughs> well, it was when it was going to be one big one. To be honest, it turned out okay. It does look better as two separate ones. So, yeah, did me a favour. And coming up here is the finished result. I'm really pleased with them. They look like the real deal. They don't look too uniform. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.